Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're working in our sequences and series series, and specifically we're talking about what a series is. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Here we just have a nice little introduction. I already did an introduction on summations if you want to check that out, but we have a series is going to be a summation from k starting at 1 to infinity of our a sub k terms. So here you plug in k is equal to 1, and here we get a sub 1, and then we add on when k is equal to 2 plus k is equal to 3, k is equal to 4, so on and so forth, right? So let's see some examples here. First, we have a summation from k going from 1 to infinity of 1 over k. So first, we plugged in k was equal to 1, and we got 1 divided by 1 is 1. Then we plugged in k was equal to 2, k is equal to 3, k is equal to 4, and k is equal to 5. So what we're doing is we're replacing our k value each time, and we're adding all of these up. So the k value is always going to be counting numbers, right? It's always going to be 1, 2, 3. Sometimes we can start at a different number. So we could start at 4 here, and we would have 1 fourth plus 1 fifth plus 1 sixth. We always go in counting numbers, and then that k equals 1 or whatever number tells us where to start. Here's another example. So here we have an exponent, so k going from 1 to infinity, 1 over 2 to the power of k. So when k is equal to 1, we get 1 half plus 1 half squared is 1 fourth. 1 half cubed is 1 eighth, 1 half to the power of 4 is 1 sixteenth, right? So are we picking up on a pattern here? We have one more example here. So here we have 2k plus 1. So when k is equal to 1, we get 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. When k is equal to 2, we get 4 plus 1 is equal to 5, and then so on and so forth. So you, these are examples of infinite series. It's when we go from k equals 1 to infinity, but we also have finite series, and that's when we end at an actual number. So maybe it's k equals 1 to 5. So typically in calculus, we do deal with infinite series, but that doesn't mean we don't use finite series, right? So some properties of series is that, first of all, when we have a scalar multiple, so let's say C is our scalar multiple, you can either multiply that by the inside or you can just bring that out to the outside. It's not going to make a difference. So let's go ahead and see what happens here. First, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug in N, right? So we get 3 times 5 to the power 1 plus 3 times 5 to the power 2 plus 3 times 5 to the power of 3, and then that goes on forever. So we can rewrite this. This is going to be 3 times 5 is 15, plus 3 times 25 is 75, plus 3 times 125, that's going to be 375, plus dot, dot, dot. Another way that you can do this if you don't like writing it out like this is that you can have your n term, and then you can have your a sub n term, right? So you can make a nice little chart. So n is going to start at 1, going to go to 2, 3, and you could just plug that in. So 3 times 5 to the power of 1, 3 times 5 to the power of 2, 3 times 5 to the power of 3, that's equal to 15, 75, and 375. And then from the chart, you can just add those together. So whichever way you like it. Let's go ahead and compare that to when we bring that 3 to the outside and then multiply it by the series. So we have 3 times 5 to the power of 1, 5 to the power of 2, 5 to the power of 3, plus all the way down. That's going to be equal to the exact same series, right? So it doesn't matter where you put that scalar multiple, it can be on the inside of the series, it can be on the outside of the series, it's going to end up being the exact same thing. So let's go on to the second property. We have when we add or subtract two different little formulas in here, you can separate those two series out. So then you get the series k equals 1 to infinity of a sub k, plus or minus whatever b sub k, right? So let's go ahead and see an example here. So I have k minus 1 over k. So first we're going to find out what these are equal to. So I'm going to plug in k is equal to 1. I get 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 2 minus 1 over 2 plus, and we'll just go to the third term here, plus so on. And now let's go ahead and compare that to what happens when we separate those into two different series. So here, this is going to be equal to, and we'll do the first one first, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus so on, minus, and now we'll do the second series, 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus dot, 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 because it goes on forever. So now let's go ahead and combine these. So we have 1 minus 1 over 1, right? So I can rewrite that 1 minus 1 over 1. You can simplify it, but I'm just trying to show that these two series are equivalent. And then we get 2 minus 1 over 2. You can probably see the pattern that's happening here. Plus, and then you see that 3 minus 1 over 3. And you can see that these are going to end up being the exact same series. So let's move on to the third property we have here. We have the series from i equals 1 to some value c of our sequence a sub i plus, and now we're going from i equals c plus 1 to infinity. You can combine that into one series, and so that's going to be i equals 1 to infinity of a sub i. 
So let's go ahead and see how this works. We have here the series from i equals 1 to 5. So let's go ahead and write that one out first. So first we have 0 0.4 to the 1, 0 0.4 to the 2, 0 0.4 to the 3, 0 0.4 to the 4, 0 0.4 to the 5 plus, and now we're going to move on to the second one where we start at 6, 0 0.4 to the 6, 0 0.4 to the 7, so on and so forth. This is exactly the same as if we just started from i equals 1 to infinity of 0 0.4 to the i, right? Because it still goes in order. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And so that's how that would work. Here we have the fourth property, and we have j equals n to infinity of a sub n is equal to j is equal to n minus k to infinity of a sub n plus k, which is also equivalent to j equals n plus k to infinity of a sub n minus k. So notice here, when we subtract from the index, we add to our n. When we add to our index, we subtract from our n. So let's see what that looks like, really. We have the summation j equals 5 to infinity of j plus 6. So let's go ahead and write out these terms. First, we get 5 plus 6 plus, and that's going to be 6 plus 6 plus, and we'll just go to the third term here, right, so on and so forth. That's going to be equal to 11 plus 12 plus 13, and then it goes on forever. Now, let's go ahead and compare this. What I did was I subtracted 4 from the index, right, which means I need to add 4 to j. So, j ex so what I did was I added 4 to j, so let's go ahead and see how this changes things. If I plug in j is equal to 1, I get 1 plus 4, getting ahead of myself, plus 6, plus j is equal to 2, so we get 2 plus 4, plus 6. We'll go to the third term again. 3 plus 4 plus 6, so on. Let's go ahead and simplify that. Notice here that we're going to get our 5 plus 6. That's going to be our 6 plus 6, and that one is going to be our 7 plus 6, right? And if I simplify that one more time, we are getting the exact same series. So notice here how I can change the index. Let's try it one more time. What I did here was I added 5 to the index. So we originally started at 5, I added 10, which means I need to subtract 5 from my j. So here, let's go ahead and make sure that this is going to be the same sequence. So if I start at 10, we get 10 minus 5 plus 6. We go up to 11, we get 11 minus 5 plus 6. And then finally, we're going to go up to 12. So we get 12 minus 5 plus 6, and then so on, right? So let's make sure this is the same sequence. We get 5 plus 6. This is going to be equal to 6 plus 6. And then finally, 7 plus 6, so on. And then again, you're going to notice that this is the exact same sequence. So let's go through some example problems. We're going to write an infinite series for this series right here, 0 0.9 plus 0 0.09, so on. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite these as fractions. So we have 9 tenths plus 9 over 100, 9 over 1,000, and then that one's going to be 9 over 10,000, and it's going to go on forever. So notice in the denominator, they're all powers of 10. So that's going to be 10 to the power of 1. The 100 is 10 to the power of 2. 1,000 is 10, not writing 1,000, is 10 to the power of 3. 10,000, 10 to the power of 4. So notice here how we can write this as a series. Here you can use whatever index you want. I'm going to use n is equal to 1 to infinity, 9 over 10 to the power of n. Some other ways you can write that is that you could bring that scalar multiple to the outside, right? Just like we saw in our properties, and we have 1 over 10 to the power of n. Another way you could write that is n equals 1 to infinity, 1 over 10 to the power of n. All of these are correct. You can write it exactly how you want. You could add or subtract from the index, but make sure you change the n value accordingly in the little equation. Problem 2 we have here, we have um, some formulas for different series. So here... Um, for the first one, c is a constant, so if we have k equals 1 to n, that's equal to c times n, because if we're summing up c, that's just going to be c plus c plus c plus all the way down plus c, and that's going to be n iterations of c, so that's n times c. So that's how we got the first formula. I'm not going to prove the other two right now, maybe a different video if you guys want it. But here we have the summation k equals 1 to n of k is equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2, and then for that third one, we have k equals 1 to n of k squared is equal to n times n plus 1 times n plus 2, all divided by 6. So we're going to use this to evaluate this series right here. So the first thing that we want to do is find these formulas in this little equation. So here we have k equals 1 to 96. We're going to go ahead and use that first property where we can separate this. It's like we're distributing the summation, right? So that's going to be k, and you can have that minus on the outside, k equals 1 to 96 of 4. 
we're going to go ahead and use another property where we can bring out that scalar multiple of three. So now that we have all of these separated out, we can go ahead and plug in the formulas. So we have three multiplied by, and that's going to be your k squared. So in this case, our n is 96. So we have 96 times 96 plus 1 is 97. 96 plus 2 is 98, all divided by 6, plus the summation of k. So we're going to place that 96 multiplied by 97 divided by 2 minus 4, and that's going to be multiplied by n, so times 96. You can use a calculator to go ahead and simplify that. If this was on like one of our exams, we wouldn't expect you to simplify this any further. We just want to make sure you can use the properties and apply that n value. So here for problem three, we're going to combine these three series into one series. So in order to combine series, you want to make sure they have the exact same index. So you have to choose, am I going to start at one? Am I going to start at zero? Am I going to start at four? I'm going to go ahead and choose one because I like one, uh, whatever you want. So that first series is going to stay the same. n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n plus. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to add 1 to our index, which means I need to subtract 1 from n. Only n. I cannot write 2n minus 1. That is not the same. I have to subtract it specifically from n. And then right here, n equals, I'm going to subtract 3, so I get 1 to infinity. That means I need to add 3 to my n value. So now that all three of these have the same index, we can combine it into one summation. So n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n plus 2 times n minus 1 minus 3 to the n plus 3. And that right there would be our solution. So that's all I have for us in this video today. If you enjoyed it, I have many more like it, so make sure to check out my playlist or link down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.